John. So I believe it's going to be here. I believe we have one more year option on our contract. And speak of the devil, here he comes now, Mr. Dark Tangent. Who by, who, by the way, for the first time in 10 DEFCONs was thrown in the pool this year, so. Okay. And without further ado, Mr. Dark Tangent. Hey, hey um, there's a slight screw up. It's supposed to be after the 4 o'clock talk, not before. But that's okay, we're going to do the award ceremony now. No, no, after the 4 o'clock speaker. Wasn't there supposed to be a speaker right now? No? Oh, oh, right, the big colossal fuck up. <laughs> so, um, do we have the Caesars Challenge people available? These get them together? Okay, and then we have, uh, we were trying to find the people that did the, the social engineering video from last year. I don't know if you guys remember that. Yeah, so they couldn't come up with anything in time for this year. But what we do have is we have some more contests. And you might have noticed some people wearing black badges. Those are our VIP badges. They're for people who have won contests. So um, some people already have gotten their badges by accident. Uh, the rest of them will be giving them here. Um, so I want to start it off and first thank everybody for making the whole convention possible. So give yourselves a round of applause because this is the best year we've had in 10 years. So. I was uh, seriously considering not doing another one of these if, it, if 10 was a lot like 9. But 10 is like, this is awesome. This is where we hope to be in, ten year, in three years. Um, we got there all in one year. So as you notice, I had time to jump in the pool. Uh, <laughs> I saw a lot more people than I've ever seen at any of my past conventions. So with that said, we're going to do an 11. So I hope to see you here again next year. So. so. I think uh, Caesar is thinking of taking his uh, contest and having a smaller version of other hacking shows. So you might have to pre-qualify to get on CTF by winning at other uh, other conventions, and then sort of the world champion showdown will be here. That sounds pretty cool. Okay, yes. With with that much ado, let's. Uh, who's going to be the first people to be announced? Let's have the scavenger. Are the scavenger hunt winners here? Yeah. Where are you guys at? Okay, who's going to introduce and explain the contest and give away the prizes? That would be you. Okay. So I want to hand it over. How's it going? Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Grifter. I organized the scavenger hunt this year with the help of the Hectic Crew and 2600 Salt Lake City. Uh, we had a really, really good uh, hunt this year. Usually Flipper Smack runs it, but uh, Pinguino couldn't make it this year, so she turned the reins over to me. Um, we had, I believe it was double, if not more, uh, items on the list, plus tier two and tier three items. Uh, prizes came from every vendor out there. We got uh, unbelievable support. We had a pile that just kept on growing, even up until today. Um, <laughs> yeah, we have some uh, airline vests uh, floating around also. <laughs> Good for the pool. Um, we had good teams playing. Two teams were really, really duking it out, uh, Agape and um, Exodus. And in the end, uh, the winning team was Exodus, so without further ado. you got to explain some of the items they got that were extra cool. Oh, uh, extra cool items. Uh, Uncle Ira gave us an unbelievable amount of hardware. Um, all kinds of t-shirts, every t-shirt you could possibly think of. Um, like uh, Zagger, they got the woman wrapped in uh, saran wrap. <laughs> yeah, uh, woman uh, wrapped in saran wrap. We had uh, several teams get that. We had things like uh, eating 20 packets of sweet and low, which yes, octopus. Uh, we had different people do that. I didn't realize how bad that was going to be. Uh, and then when she was doing it, I said, "Give me one of those," and I poured it in my mouth, and we instantly doubled the uh, the points right there on the spot. Um, let's see, uh, what else did we have? Uh, a cow's head, which uh, people got really creative on, a uh, candle shaped like a penis. Um, Thank you guys. <laughs> it's just out there. Uh, what's that? 
Yes, uh, I believe two people uh, streak through talks. Um, walking around the vendor area, do three laps around the vendor area in your underwear. Um, bring a tech TV personality up so they were constantly being badgered throughout the entire con. Thank you, tech TV, if any of you are still here. Um, I, I, what's that? That's right, arm wrestling priest. Um, <laughs> Priest was on there. It was arm wrestle priest. Every year people try to arm wrestle priest. And uh, we actually had four times the point if you win, but nobody won. So. Priest won. Yeah. Tokyo from last year. Who was the other guy? Who was the major credit card company from the U.S. with security audit? I was arm wrestling the president of the subsidy in Japan and the CEO of that company at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Most exclusive steakhouse in Rapungi. Because fuck politics is a matter of honor. <laughs> Amen. But it's, it's a pretty funny uh, photos. It's at exo.com slash Tilly Priest. You'll see a picture of my dog. <laughs> my leg pictures. My dog's actually bringing me a CD of the inside of my leg so you can see me becoming bionic. <laughs> well, um, I think that uh, wraps it up. If anybody can think, um, some of the teams. Uh, let's see. Uh, Just no name came in uh, third, uh, second. Pl What's that? Stupid. All right, stupid team name. Sorry, stupid team name came in third. Uh, second place was Agape, and then uh, first place was Exodus. Uh, other than that, a lot of the teams that we had playing would uh, come up with maybe three items and then look at the score. We had stats being updated constantly, and then uh, today, when it was down to the wire, we projected them onto the wall behind the scavenger hunt table so that uh, all the teams could just run back and forth like uh, chickens with their heads cut off, trying to get that last hundred points, or um, which, <laughs> yeah, trying to find a live chicken um, or an EFF receipt, on a PayPal EFF receipt for $100, uh, which we actually did get, um, so... Uh, that was good. We did a little good and uh, taking homeless people to lunch and whatnot. Did you uh, get the DEF CON tattoo? Yes. Actually, there are several people wandering around with DEF CON tattoos. Um, yeah, one of them is right there. Uh, stand up. Yeah. Stand up. Let's see it. Still healing, but not band aids on it. That's it. DEF CON for life. Else? Yeah. All right, Team Exodus, come on up. Give them a round of applause. They really worked hard all weekend long. Anyone that come up, have them introduce each other. All right, introduce yourself. I'm going to hand out. All right. Say a little something about yourself. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Almas isn't shy. Busted. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Siviac. I actually managed to put this together through... Minutes of planning, <laughs> days of planning, minutes of sobriety, uh, you, you say tomato. Uh, we had a great time. Seriously, we really like to thank Grifter. It was a hell of a run this year. Uh, Agape did give us a run for our money, and we just had a great time. I, I think this has been one of the best cons yet. I'd like to introduce my team. We have Dana, Almas, Virus, and Octopussy. As we appreciate it. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next year. Black badges, baby. Yours, sir. I think hey, we should. If I, get a, if I get a picture with DT, can I get a picture with DT? Yeah, if we get a picture with DT now, can we get it for next year? Points? All right, next year, points. <laughs> Thank you. Can we bring a black badge? You have to do the handshake, the whole. Yeah, yeah. Elbow, elbow, wrist, wrist. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, next up, I think uh, a new contest year the, this year, the war driving contest, as uh, judged by Peter Shipley. I think uh, Chris is going to be giving the results. Um, we had quite a number of teams turn out, way more than we thought. We thought maybe 10, 20 people would play. I think we had over 100. Uh, 
86 actually. 86 actually played. Um, I want to hand it over to Chris. He's going to explain the contest, since m some of you may not be familiar with it. And then he's going to uh, give away the results. And we'll, uh, we'll hand out the badges, and you'll meet the team. Um, if some of you have driven around the parking lot, you see some cars with some absolutely ridiculous things strapped to the back of them. I think one guy's got like a radio tower in the bed of his truck. <laughs> It was so funny, it was an, it's an FM radio antenna for the California car caravan when they drove out. Somebody thought it was like a, a war driving antenna and he left this awesome note under the windshield. Antenna's like 8 foot 9 or 10 feet. It said, if that is for war driving, you're my fucking hero. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Um, if I could actually get a little bit of uh, help from you guys for a second, I'm going to uh, talk about the number of APs that were found out there. So if I could get everybody in the room to just stand up. Everybody stand. <laughs> you can stay seated. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start counting up from 100. When you think that is the total number of APs that were found in Las Vegas in two hours, I want you to sit down. Start off with 100. If you think there were 100 APs in Vegas, sit down. 200. 300. 400. 500. 600. 700. 800. 900. 1G. 1100. 1200. 1300, 1400, 1500, 1600. There were actually 1,804 unique APs. I do not have the actual stats on how many of those are wide open yet. I'm going to post them on the web page tonight or tomorrow. I do want to start off with, um, there were uh, 21 teams that actually competed. Uh, of those, we had very few problems. Pete spent the last uh, day and a half essentially with no sleep going through and cleaning up the data because uh, a lot of the data, the conversion scripts that people wrote didn't work right. So if you wrote a conversion script, uh, you should really thank Pete because he's the one who went through and cleaned the data up to make sure that it was actually counted for you. Um, He would have been here, but he is dead tired and actually went and laid down to go to sleep finally. Um, I want to start off, though, with the one team that there was absolutely nothing we could do for. Uh, they actually get a prize. They were, um, let's see, FW Monkeys, if they could come up here. FW Monkeys. Either the FW Monkeys cheated or... They wrote a very, very, very bad script because apparently they did their war drive while everyone else was in Vegas about 12,000 miles from here. <laughs> when you see the map, Jen, for their data, it is in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> you guys' prize is the official DOC titanium letter opener. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> Uh, we say not to that, right? <laughs> um, next, I want to talk about the team that came in fifth. They will be receiving a Jesus.net t-shirt, DOC underwear, and a Practical Unix t-shirt, courtesy of DOC. Thank you guys very much. Um, that was the fifth place team, and that is Ciara. They had... 650 points, they found 196 APs, 56 unique APs. Are they here? Come on up. Jesus.net t-shirt, courtesy of Jesus.net. DOC underwear, courtesy of DOC. You will look very good in that, by the way. <laughs> And the Practical Unix and Internet Security T-shirt from DOC. Thanks a lot. Our fourth place team had 
204 APs found, 86 of which were unique, and 102 open APs. Uh, they had a score of 838, and that was Gray Hat. If they're here, to come, they can come on up. They will receive a Prism Wireless card, uh, DOC glass, and two uh, Second Century shirts. They're not here. I get their prizes. <laughs> Which team were they? Uh, they were okay. Priest just said that the uh, Fed team were trained investigators and did not make the finals. <laughs> I actually know our third place team is not here. I already took care of them and hooked them up with their prizes before because they uh, had a flight out this evening. But just uh, real quick, the. Uh, uh, Physlexic Ducks was our third place team. They had a total score of 1,185, 338 APs, 137 of those unique, and 81 open. Uh, second place team gets uh, a laptop. <laughs> uh, it's a, one of those really big laptops like I was selling. Yes, exactly. Uh, that team had uh, 342 APs, 215 of them unique, 122 open, total score 1,671, and that was uh, Mintat and H-Ratch. Are they here? Are they here? Very good. All your laptop are belong to us. <laughs> Finally, our, our grand prize winner, they're going to get the four black badges. Uh, they're also going to get uh, four t-shirts courtesy of bsdatwork.com. They had... 500, I'm sorry, yeah, 550 APs, 231 of which were unique, 94 open with a score of 1,893. The team was Wireless Con. If you are here, come collect your prizes. They are not here. They are here. <laughs> hmm? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's you guys. <laughs> 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 yeah. There's only two of you? Yeah, we're done. Where the other two are. Oh, Just their badges. Alright, cool. So, it's later. eBay! Hold one of the t shirts up and show everybody what they look like. They're pretty cool from BSD at work. I'd like to thank everybody that participated in the war drive this year. We essentially put the contest together in about six weeks. Uh, I know there was some disorganization because of that. We're actually, Pete and I have already started planning it for next year. So next year is going to run much smoother and we plan to have at least twice as many people participating. Thank you very much. Okay, the next uh, set of awards is for the smallest competition at DEF CON. Um, I didn't even know what happened. It was the uh, third year of Coffee Wars. Last year, last year Coffee Wars was kind of big. This year there were only two contestants. Um, <laughs> that, that could be because uh, I went to the website and it only said Coffee Wars 2, not 3, so I don't think anybody knew of it. Um, but I have a prepared statement from the Coffee Wars organizers and then uh, a prize for the, for the winners. Um, okay, so Coffee Wars this year was a small event with virtually no planning, flawed implementation, and only two entrants. <laughs> Sets the stage. We had some great coffee, though, and nice people came out to help us drink, judge, and appreciate it. I'd like to say a special thanks to the... to... Aetion Shiru, I butchered that, uh, for help with the cups, and for Marine for the general willingness to assist, especially with cleanup. In the interests of goodwill, and because both entrants were very tasty, we'd like to declare a tie between Mark Renoff with the Kenya AA blend and Fufus 
with a, a Cora de Oro uh, blend. Uh, thanks, and see you all next year. And if those two people are not, are they here? Are Fufus or Mark here? Fufus or Mark? No? Okay, then we have two coffee makers. Oh, is Fufus here? You get a coffee maker. And I guess the other one will be given away if the other contestant is not here. Okay, sh Oh, you don't want to carry them home. That's fair enough. Okay. So this is the uh, this is a trick question which I have uh, been saying for years now. Oh, you can come and get your badges. Get your badges. Yeah. <laughs> Come on up. You have to tell us just a little bit about your roast that uh, won, that tied you. Uh, well, the, the Ancora de Oro is from a local uh, artisan roaster in Madison, Wisconsin. It's uh, Arabica beans, and it's a, what's called a city roast, which is dark roasted. Organic Yes. The uh, Kenya AA was uh, picked up at Trader Joe's, if you're familiar with that chain. <laughs> Nothing special, but... I'm glad it tied. <laughs> okay, so whoever can answer this trick question that I've been asking for five years uh, gets them. In the movie Tron, what is the password for the MCP? There's no password. No. Who said that? You just got two coffee makers. The correct answer was reindeer flotilla. Very good. One real quick thing uh, that I forgot to mention on the war drive. I really wanted to thank Black Wave and Freckles for all their help on the war drive. They did a great job helping us organize it. They're sitting right up front. If you guys could stand up. Thank you very much for all of your help. Okay, next up, uh, we're building toward the capture the flag uh, winning team, as you may know. But we're going to keep that in reserve to keep you all in the room. So next up, I think, do we have the uh, Hacker Jeopardy winners here? Did they make it in here? Where are you? Hacker Jeopardy winners. It's Detroit Crew. The Detroit Crew. Detroit. There are only two of you guys? The, the other one's at a strip club. Okay. So I want you guys to get up here, introduce yourselves, and tell us your winning uh, beer management strategy. As usual, it comes down to who can drink the least. No, no, we gave extra, uh, we gave extra points for a number of bottles. Oh, extra points? Yeah. You're going to have to do the talking my voice about that. Yeah, Ed Max's voice has died from all the screaming on the first half of the competition. Uh, basically, there's no beer management. We just drank as much as we could. And that was our secret. <laughs> Because three one three seven is just leap. That's you know that's what it all is. And we will be back next year to defend our title. Detroit will represent again next year in ghetto style. <laughs> Oh, wait, I forgot to mention, uh, to continue our tradition of Hacker Jeopardy, since it's one of our core events, we have limited edition $300 leather jackets to give out to each winner. Complete. Oh, very nice. So if you can find your size, you guys get one. <laughs> since your friend's not here, too bad. Yeah, you can find out his size and email me and I'll mail it to him, but I'm, you just can't carry it off. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I think uh, I think we have programmer size and. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm getting a call. Hello. Hey. Hey, I'm, I'm in the middle of something right now. <laughs> yeah, no problem. <laughs> Okay, do they fit? Right on. Oh, you found one of the rare brown ones. Is that the brown bomber? We only made like six of those. Extra rare. Yeah, very cool. Right on. Okay, let's have a round of applause. Yeah. Okay.
Okay, so now is the time we've all been waiting for. It is time for the Ghetto Hackers to introduce and tell us about the world's best CTF event we've ever had. Their work over the last year turned this Capture the Flag into just a flagship contest that is just incredible. So let's hear a great round of applause for Caesar and the Ghetto Hackers. Uh, we'd bring the Ghetto Hacker crew up here, um, but that would take an hour or so. Um, thanks, everybody, for making this a great year, a great con, all the way around, really. I mean, this has blown me away how fantastic of a time we've had this year. Um, I'd go off through all the credits, but every Ghetto Hacker came in and took some part of this over the last year. We really worked our butts off, and as is obligatory, we fucked some things up. Um, we'll do it better next year, and we'll say this again next year when we say we fuck things up and we'll do it better next year. <laughs> but without much further ado, um, yeah, well, we'll actually tell people how the game is going to be played before they play it next year. Um, let me, <laughs> let me give you, let me, for anybody who wasn't really close to that, let me give you guys a rundown of what happened. We basically told teams they were going to come here, defend something they didn't know about, and attack the same thing in a group of eight people, sort of a free-for-all quake deathmatch style. Um, it went really, really well for as weird of a contest as it was, so I think we're going to try to present it again next year if people want to come play. Is that okay, you guys, back there, team players? <laughs> So, um, the scoreboard that you were all seeing, the, the positions on the board were actually not necessarily an indicator of how well the team was going to rate on the finals. It was how well they've been doing recently, sort of a, what have you done for me lately. Um, so a couple of teams did really, really well early in the contest and then fell downward and uh, actually got some, maybe some demoralizing feelings and we'll fix that scoreboard. But, uh, so I'm gonna go through from bottom to top how the uh, how the scores went and how maybe I saw how the teams got to where they got. So um, with minus 24 points, purple team took five polling cycles. This means that for five different five minute periods, they actually had a functioning machine over the 28 hours or so of the contest. <laughs> hey, don't laugh so much. We, we were expecting scores um, somewhere for what it's worth up in the uh, one to 200 range. Um, and nobody quite got there. So uh, teams will have a lot of room for improvement next year and definitely our, our system has room for improvement as well. Um, blue team, radically higher, um, minus 22 points. And uh, they had 30 captures or 30 polling cycle wins, so that's uh, 150 minutes or so of, of owning one machine and it was probably their own machine. Um, <laughs> The reason that they're negative, however, I'll make this real clear, the purple team took 29 points in penalties for using too much network bandwidth. Blue team took 52 points in penalties for using too much bandwidth. They were actually a highly competitive team, but they used so much bandwidth that we had to take all their points away and send them into the, into the doldrums. Uh, red, six positive points. They got, they got above the low water mark. And, uh, they're coming back. <laughs> Um, they had 17 points. They uh, took 10 points in penalties. Um, yellow team. Uh, this is the Chaos Computer Club, um, or some variant thereof. 22 positive points. 43 captures, which turns out is uh, quite competitive, but they took 20 points in penalties. Um, they, at one point on Friday evening, this is where the, the the stories started getting a little more interesting. At one point on Friday evening, they were so far ahead that all seven teams competing against them were negative on the scoreboard, and theirs was just flashing brilliant green, uh, an amazing, an amazing uh, lead that they had, and bled it all away when they tried to over-secure their machine and make it impossible to get back into it. Um, green team came in next, 46 points, five points in penalties. Nice job, green team, for not wasting a lot of bandwidth. As uh, as our newscaster says, good job not fucking up the network. Um, that's uh, Midori, green team. Nice job, guys. Um, so their total score was uh, 40 points to the positive. I'm going to, in a little bit, I'll put up a uh, graphic of the actual final score rankings. But um, Brown team, 48 points total after 90 points 
made. These guys had the most captures, the most polling cycles won. They did a really great job, and they got penalized 42 points for using just entirely too much bandwidth. The reason, let me explain that real quick, because that deserves some note, that Brown team outcaptured everyone else and didn't win the contest because we made it real clear to them right up front that we were way more interested in stealth attacks than in constant scans and so forth. Shmoo Group goes to a lot of uh, trouble to make logs available. Um, you can, Pablo's... Shmoo.com? Yeah, yeah I mean, if you go to shmoo.com, you can get the entire network traffic probably a week or two from now, maybe later today. Let me give this over to Pablo's real quick. We'll get back to the scoring. Um, one thing that was really cool about what, the way Caesar structured the contest is that, first of all, all the DOS attacks were shut out, and you were penalized for using more bandwidth than the other teams. So we have about 240 megs of logs compared to about 9 gigs last year. <laughs> So it's a big difference, and it all, you know, we have to spend some time distilling the data. Should be up online over the next week or two. We're going to try sending it out via BitTorrent, so get that working on your on your box, and then when it gets slashed out, it go get the data. Thanks, Pablo. Uh, these guys have been providing logging services and analysis of the contest for a while, and they bring in all their own equipment, work it really hard. So they're sort of one of the unsung heroes of the Capture the Flag winning business. So thanks, guys. Shmoo.com. Okay, so for the two big teams who fought it out to the very end, um, we need to make sure that everybody knows exactly what it was they were fighting for. So uh, why don't you bring that belt on up here. For the first time, we're giving one heavyweight belt out for the winner of defending and attacking and surviving in a real, relatively real-world environment. This is a real heavyweight championship, and I figure next year there's going to be some teeth knocked out, maybe some ear biting. This is, we'll make, the belt's going to grow up a little bit, of course. Maybe we'll get some qualifiers from other places, but two teams are competing for this belt for leather jackets, black badges, free t-shirts from Jinx. Um, so whichever one of you two teams wants me to stop talking about this and tell you which ones you are. Jinx will be giving you guys um, some free t-shirts and uh, I can stall a little bit longer. Big deal is the ultimate bragging rights. Y'all get to walk away and uh, do what we've been doing and drink yourselves to death for the next three years and try to defend it. Um, in second place with 51 points to the positive on 55 captures and only 3.8 points penalized by far the least traffic used on the network, the white team. This leaves, this leaves the orange team, this leaves the orange team with 64 captures, nine points in penalties, reasonable behavior, um, with 54 total points in the end as the heavyweight championship capture the flag finalists. Come on down, boys. Oh yeah, this is beautiful. Yep. I think we know who's taking the belt. Oh, actually, I've got one more thing to say while they're coming up um, about these guys. One thing that, 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 that we're really not counting on is that we gave them the 10-point uh, penalty for having a red hat. <laughs> no, we really didn't. We really wanted to, but since they won, we couldn't take that away from them. And, um, they're going to introduce themselves. They're going to talk about their winning strategy how it was that they came to uh, get this way, and hopefully they'll give us a clue about how much they drank during the contest so that we don't have to bring blood alcohol meters next time and make them drink. So. Oh, we drank. <laughs> We are Digital Revelation. Uh, we kind of returning from last year, where we uh, merged with Ghetto and won last year. 
Um, the uh, <laughs> basically, I don't know strategy. We had really good skills on both sides. We had a lot of good defenders and a lot of good offenders. Um, <laughs> and they're pretty offensive. <laughs> yeah, we basically we got a couple hours sleep last night finally, but <laughs> we were getting a little bit bad there. <laughs> um, I don't sleep. Know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was our winning strategy. Don't sleep. Yeah, not at all. <laughs> Especially if you're going to make a box that's solid. <laughs> Actually, um, the Stars. We should, yeah, yeah, we're rock star. Rock star, yeah. We should. We, they're big. <laughs> we should, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, my name is Vizigoth. We. Uh, I think one of the things that was uh, a leading strategy is just that we spent the whole night, all night long, on Friday night, developing a hardened system and developing. Um, that looked a little completely, bit like yeah. the Red Hat box original. <laughs> so oh, completely. Not taking enough credit. It was. It was Zeon and Vizigoth. It was these two guys. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, and basically it was all jailed and stuff. So, oh, introduce us. Yeah, let's introduce. Yeah. All right, yeah, introduce everybody. Okay. Um. Well, we've got uh, Temtel first, and oh, Temtel, you're bad. Oh, no, no, and Shadow, Shadows. Sorry, I missed you for a second. <laughs> Thanks to Shadow, mostly for the alcohol. <laughs> um, we've got. Shoot, I forgot. Handles. <laughs> Is it Tagger? Yeah, and um, Packet Chunky, <laughs> and oh, Doctor Fed, <laughs> and Freak, and Jason. Are we one short? Yeah, and Visigoth and Zeon. <laughs> hey, congratulate these guys. I'm sorry. sorry. We also had a. A couple of special thanks. Thanks to the red team, first of all, and the folks on the Air Force for that, <laughs> on their team. Um, not to mention all, not to mention all the military folks that we had running recon and stuff the first day. And just basic, like you know, enforcement to prevent from shoulder surfing. Sort of yeah, yeah, tricks like tricks like <laughs> knocking discs off of other people's table and having With a tape, tape off the bottom <laughs> of their shoe and picking them up. Very good. Um, let's see. Uh, let's. Do, 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 do. Oh, anybody who like stopped by and brought us food and yeah. drinks and water and stuff like that was very cool. Hacker, and oh, Hacker, and Hacker a special Joe. thanks to one other vital member of our uh, Hacker Joe had to leave on a flight because uh, his wife was here. Here, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> and also, and also, also a special thanks to his company for expensing all the pizza. Yeah, oh, yeah. definitely. Oh wait, maybe we shouldn't. <laughs> Um, yeah, never yeah. mind. I, th <laughs> I think that's cool. I think that's it, but thanks. We had a miscalculation. I only have two leather jackets here, so the remaining members, they'll just give me their sizes, and we'll produce the jackets and send them to you. So whoever can fit in these jackets can take them now. Cool. And then uh, who's the member, the leader? You. You will be responsible for getting me the names of the other guys. Right on. Okay. Let's give them a round of applause. Okay, so congratulations once again to Xeon and the uh, Digital Revelation team. Uh, we hope to see these guys. Um, obviously, they're pre-qualified for next year's contest. Um, GhettoHackers.org slash CTF is where the site uh, is where the rule page is. It's where we're going to post the logs. Um, unfortunately, I didn't copy all the logs off of the scoreboard onto my laptop, so I'm not going to be showing all y'all the picture of the final board. I'll screenshot that, and we should have some nice graphics up on there in the next, I don't know, couple of months after we wake up again. Um, I want to give a couple of particular thanks um, for the media production. I don't know if anybody was watching, but there were some fun movies and some fantastic yeah. news clips. They did a fantastic job. Um, I'm looking, and I'm seeing the... Uh, the hentai boy, I'm seeing the anime chicken training, and, uh, and I'm seeing the weird chick, and um, Brazen in particular, because your face is going to be recognized by most of these people, come on forward for a minute, and uh, take your props for being the news newscaster du jour. Yeah, for what it's worth, there were um, 
For every team, there were six rated positions, having more than 75 points on the board, the big, the big board, having 60 to 75, 50 to 60, down to 40, down to 25, and less than that. Um, there were three movies for every one of those positions, and there were eight teams. So there were um, 120, and then plus some change for the uh, several other things. Brazen did all the work of being there and being made up and shooting those things over and over and over again so that y'all could like pretend for a minute that you were in watching Blade Runner news update. So <laughs> thank you, Brazen. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> thank you. Also, give it up for Ghetto for the, the competition this year. It was excellent. So. One of the fun side things we did was we had a business software alliance um, yeah. audit of the contests where we got to uh, have some people throw on some white shirts and run around and uh, enforce that the teams were le using legally licensed software because once in a while people think that training hackers to be better hackers is a bad thing and so yeah, it's up to you, it's up to me, it's up to every person that we know to make sure that the word gets out that it's okay to be a good guy and be a really nasty motherfucker. Um, th these are uh, legal licenses for the product VMware. I think one or two people in the room might have seen a legal license for this before but these are being given to the Digital Revelation team as well. There are, if you all have stuff to give them, heat prizes on these guys. Hard fought, well earned. Congratulations. Are there any uh, contests or teams that I'm overlooking that? Uh... No, I'm not. Okay, that's all we. That's all we have for uh, prizes and awards this year. So. Jackets. We have, yeah, don't forget the jackets. You guys also have first crack if you want to get the Zyplex or uh, any other stuff up here that's uh, for giveaway. And if you don't, we're just going to let the audience uh, take whatever we have left. Usually we have so many giveaways, but we've been pretty, pretty good about giving them out. Um, so once again, I just want to thank you all for coming. Next year, you can expect us to, to fix the scheduling problems and uh, and continue with it. I think we've been all reinvigorated by the success of this show, and it's sort of like I have before you go. I have four theories on why the show went so well, and I'll start with my favorite, which is they've put something in our water. <laughs> yeah, so I'm pretty sure that has something to do with it. Makes us mellow and smarter. So I'd like to get a stash of that stuff when we before I leave. Um, the second is that the price increase actually did something, going from 50 to 75. That's pretty hard to figure out if that had an impact. So by show of hands, how many people think that by increasing the cost, it actually lowered the lameness factor? You guys think it had an impact? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm starting to come to that. That might be my new number one theory. Um, the number three theory was that uh, with H2K2KK2 going on in the East Coast, that uh, maybe just a lot of people went there instead of coming here, and uh, and and we were happy about that. Yeah. Um, actually, our show this year was only about a hundred people less attendees than last year, but it certainly felt like thousands less. So I think that was fantastic. And my number four theory, which of course they think is the number one theory. Um, we had eight shamans go on the roof and perform a drumming ritual on Thursday night <laughs> to keep out the evil spirits. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they are over there. Yeah, all yee. So uh, I think they managed to fix the karma of the show, but in the process they whacked out the air conditioners. <laughs> So with that said, I'd like to formally, uh, well, I have one more announcement. Really nice guy is looking for a ride to San Diego, preferably sometime Monday. Um, please get in touch with me if you can, if you have a seat in your car. Um, please call me at international country code 46... <laughs> <laughs> 705 We're going to leave it right over here. So... If anybody can help out really nice guy, that would be fantastic. So with that said, I'd like to thank the speakers. I'd like to thank the attendees and the sponsors and the vendors. And I'll see you guys all next year. Thank you very much.